So on this episode of Teammate Talks, I want to talk about the principles to feeling good. And really what I'm going to focus on is principles here. Because we're in the middle of one of my favorite words of the week, which is integrity. I've released a lot of podcasts and live videos in the past about why integrity is so important to me from my past, right? Because that's the thing, right? If we have something bad happen to us in our past, then we have two choices moving forward. We can either pass on that negative experience to other people, which is what a lot of people do, or we can choose to be the change we want to see in the world and do something completely different and show how it should be done, right? And that helps us grow in principles. Integrity has several different meanings to it, but the question is really, you got to ask yourself all the time, are you living it, right? Are you living it? A lot of people are like, well, yeah, I'm a person of integrity, but are you living it? You have to really take a close look at your actions and words and how you deal with different situations to decide if you're really there or not. So integrity could be described as keeping your promises both to yourself and others. It can be described as doing the right thing regardless who is watching or if no one's watching. And it could be even put as following your heart or following your principles or following your morals, following your character, right? These things are all pieces of integrity. It's mostly about making sure that you live life to your standards, right? That, that you look at yourself really closely, you understand what morals are important to you, and that you make sure that your decisions reflect those morals, right? So one of the things I like to talk to my students about is if you believe everybody should show you respect, then integrity would say, you should show everybody respect. If you believe everybody should be nice to you, then integrity would say, that you should be nice to everybody. If you believe that people should care for one another, then have compassion, then integrity would say that you need to practice that compassion each and every day, each and every opportunity you get, right? If you believe that you want people to be honest with you and that honesty is important, right? That's a moral, that's a character trait, then integrity would say that you need to learn to be honest in a nice way with other people, right? So living to those principles, living to that code. And too many people, I think, never take the time to learn about character traits and decide which ones are important to them and think about how they can apply those in their lives. Fact of the matter is, is we don't train our kids for that that much. You know, we try to teach them how to act, but we don't really go in depth into character traits and morals and how that should be important, right? So that's one of the things that we do here at Peace Warriors Martial Arts, and we do it through Teammate Children's Stories as well, is we give parents and kids the tools to understand character traits, to see those examples and what those examples would look like in their own lives based on their age and things like that, and then encourage them to act on those principles and to see why they can be so important, right? So living, living by what you believe. So I, I put out a video the other day that said that guilt, which is by the way, in my opinion, one of the heaviest and worst emotions a person can feel. But I put about, it, about a video the other day saying that guilt is both the curse and the motivation of people that want to be better people, right? We're always gonna make mistakes, but people who feel guilt are people who do actually have a moral or principle that they believe in. And that guilt usually comes from not feeling like they took an action or words that lined up with that particular principle, which is not necessarily a bad thing because feeling that guilt can help us to try to improve the way we interact with people in the future, right? So guilt, in my opinion, in my opinion, is a good indicator. If a person does have a sense of guilt, then that is a good indicator that they at least want to be a person of integrity, principles, and morals, right? So you're not gonna feel guilt if you don't already have those principles that you feel like you're going to break. So the next step, if you're feeling guilt, is to ask yourself and even play out, like role play some stuff in your mind of this of something you feel guilty about and how you could handle that situation differently in the future so that you wouldn't feel guilty about it, right? One of the easiest ways to get good sleep at night and feel less guilty and feel good about yourself is to make sure that every action and word you take fits with your morals, it fits with your standards, and it fits with your principles, right? That is a good, solid place to start about feeling good about yourself and feeling confident about yourself is making sure that your actions and words line up with your principles and your morals, right? Now, now, this does not mean you cannot change your mind. This does not mean you cannot grow in knowledge. This does not mean that you have to draw a hard line in the sand and not listen to anything anyone else says. Matter of fact, I, I have a saying that I enjoy throwing out there to my students uh, who like to debate and argue, which is if you cannot 
argue both sides of an opinion very well, then you're not ready to have an opinion on that subject. I love that. I always feel that same way. I tell myself, do not form an opinion on any given subject unless I could argue both the pros and the cons of both sides. If I can argue the pros and cons of both sides, then I'm knowledgeable enough about it to maybe form a reasonable opinion. But if I get shown other information, then I have to readjust that opinion, right? Integrity doesn't mean digging yourself into a hole and staying there, right? That's not what it means at all. Matter of fact, one of the other principles I believe in is the ability to learn quickly and have an open mind about things. And the only way to do that is, this is how I remind myself to do that, is to not form an opinion about a subject until I can argue both sides of that subject. When I can argue both sides of that subject, then I can form a good opinion about where my principles really stand on that subject. Right, So it's not about just stubbornly staying to one particular thing, right? It's it, You also need to be able to free flow through it and constantly improve on those principles and then the way that you show those principles in your given life, like some of the examples I gave earlier in this video, right? Now, another thing I wanted to talk about is <sighs> integrity. Like, let, let's go into the doing the right thing regardless of who's watching. It is not about following the majority so that you can fit in and make friends. I'm sure we've all done that at some point in our lives, right? Followed the majority of what people thought simply because we wanted to fit in, we wanted to have friends, and things along those lines, right? I don't, I don't, I don't really subscribe to that, right? It's not about following what the majority it does. Now, it doesn't mean like, right? It doesn't mean I can't have a disagreement with a friend, right? I give, I give this example all the time. If I'm talking to uh, Jack over here, right, and I have an opposing view to something that Jack has, then that doesn't mean that I can't be nice about it. He can't be nice about it, and we can't still be friends. You know what I mean? As long as I don't resort to name calling and being really disrespectful, because I believe in respect. So integrity would say that if I have a disagreement, I'm still going to show respect. One of my things that I like to do from time to time, some of you guys have probably seen me do this. I go into some of the local groups, right? The local town groups, and every once in a while, if there's a, a, a heated post about something that I actually do have an opinion on. I will comment about it and then a lot of times that will get me someone else commenting an opposing view about it and then what I like to do is I like to go ahead and continue that conversation but not in an angry way I like to basically acknowledge what they said acknowledge the pros of what they said explain my position explain the way I feel it that way and never say anything about them or their character or name calling or any of that and by the end of most of these conversations I usually get some comment from them like you know, I really appreciate this discourse that we've had, this debate that we've had. You know, it's it's uh, nice to be able to have these discussions without without anyone uh, getting angry or mean. It's nice to be able to have these discussions respectfully. And I'm like, yeah. And the fact is, it's not that hard. All you got to do is like imagine you're talking to a friend, even if you don't know that person, or even imagine you're talking to yourself. We all have debates in our mind between two different opinions on different things like that, right? And if we treat talking to other people about those opinions the same way we would treat ourselves and being nice about it and just sticking to the situation itself and not being completely rude and a complete jerk about it, then yeah, you can still be friends. You can still get along, right? This is something I talk to my students about all the time. It's not always about following the majority. So let me get into some studies. I, I don't have the exact studies to cite in front of me. I'm sorry. I do have a book that lists them, but I don't have them in front of me. But following the majority can end up being a real problem right so there was this situation that got studied i can't remember if it happened in the 60s or the 70s i believe it was in bronx or new york or brooklyn somewhere somewhere in that line there was a lady that got stabbed like 50 times 50 some odd times in broad daylight by three men broad daylight right she died and nothing was realized about it until a police officer happened by and thought a homeless lady was sleeping there and went over and realized there's blood everywhere and, and she's she's died so a psychologist heard about this and decided that he wanted to study what on earth happened. Like, why was this not reported? Why was this something that no one jumped in to help her? It was on broad daylight, right? So he found some 800 some odd apartment residents that were within sight of this happening and he interviewed them. Over a third of them had seen it happening, right? So when he started asking questions about well, why, why didn't you report it? Uh, why didn't you do anything about it? Why didn't you call the police? Uh, why didn't you do something to stop it? The most common answers were basically along the lines of, 
Well, I figured somebody else would do that. I didn't know what to do, so I figured somebody else would see it and do that. In fact, of the matter is, is 250, 300 people all said that. All said that, well, somebody else will handle it. I don't know what to do. So they followed the majority, and this ended up happening to that lady, and no one ever called it in. So this psychologist got really interested in this type of behavior. And so he went and he did several other studies. One of the ones that I like to cite a lot, he went and had somebody in random public places fake a heart attack or fake a stroke, fake stroke symptoms or heart attack symptoms, right? And half of the time, he would just have that happen in public and see what would happen. The vast majority of the time, I mean seven out of ten times, people would look and then they'd look around at other people in the area and when they would see no one else was doing anything, they would just walk on. So he describes this in a psychological principle that basically is that when we tend to run across something that we don't know what to do or we don't understand, we have a tendency to look to the majority. Most of us have a tendency to look to the majority to see what they're doing so that we can decide what we should do. And if we look around and everyone else is doing the same thing, looking around, not doing anything, then it becomes really easy for us to go, well, if no one else is doing something, I guess I shouldn't be doing anything either, and then not do it. Only three out of 10 times did someone actually stop and help. And when someone actually stopped and helped in those three out of 10 times, 10 other people stopped to help. Amazing right amazing it only took one person going against the majority and going to help to cause everybody in the area to want to help in that situation right but it takes one person first it takes one person to want to help first like i was saying earlier about a social media contest and i was appreciating all those comments on our post it took one person to start doing those comments before five and six people would start commenting on things right we are social creatures so we tend to not do things unless we see someone else doing it first Seven out of ten of us, according to these studies. Now, these numbers might have changed in more recent years. I don't know how recently they've recreated this study. I believe these were done in the 80s. I believe the ones I'm citing are done, were done in the 80s. Now, they did this study again, but they had their plant guy who was uh, faking the heart attack or the stroke. And then they had another guy who would come in and swoop in to try to help. Now, half the time, this guy would swoop in and try to help and yell out things like, somebody help, somebody call 911, right? Somebody, uh, is there a doctor around? Something along those lines, right? He would say something like that. And in those times that he would swoop in, 10 other people would come in and they'd be like, how can I help, how can I help? But if he'd start yelling those things, everybody would stand there and look at each other and no one would start calling 911. No one would make a move to actually do what he was asking them to do. <clears throat> so the other half of the time, they would have him swoop in and instead of saying random generic things, he would point to, so they would have him point to somebody and say, you in the black shirt, you in the red hat, call 911. And then when that would happen, whoever he called out was usually really quick to take action. And what that comes down to is he swoops in to help, other people want to help, but they don't know what to do. So they're looking to each other to figure out what to do. And if someone's saying call 911, then they're looking to see if anyone else is doing it. And if no one else is doing it, they're not going to do it because they're not sure about doing it. But if you're in trouble and you point to a person and you tell them specifically, you with the white shoes, you with the whatever, call 911, I think I'm having a heart attack, you are 10 times more likely to get help faster. So if you ever find yourself in that situation, maybe you're out with a parent or a grandparent and there's a medical emergency, make sure that you stop and you point at somebody that happens to be nearby and you say, hey, you in the black shorts, call 911 for me. We've got a medical emergency here and they're going to be far more likely to go ahead and call 911 than if you just yelled out, somebody call 911. These studies were absolutely fascinating to me to read and they've redone these studies through the 90s i don't know if they've ever done them again in the 2000s but what this basically showed is this this social principle that we have where if we don't know what to do we look to others to see what they're doing if no one knows what to do then no one tends to do anything right that's a problem right that's a problem that's not enough leaders in a crowd right so this is why one of our taglines we talk about here at peace warriors is creating leaders one black belt at a time, creating tomorrow's leaders one black belt at a time because we want people to be so strong in their principles and morals that they don't look to the majority to see what they're doing if they see that someone needs help they go help 
right? Or they go see if they can help, and then they do everything they can to, to do that. That takes a leader. And then if one person does that, many, many others will do that. As Ms. Rose just said here, everyone is always looking for the adult or adult. That's absolutely right. Now, if you want to read about some of these studies, there's several books on them, but I think my favorite one is they're cited in the book Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. You can check that out. Uh, but yeah, so, so when we look at it that way, let's go back to talking about integrity. So if integrity tells you, you walk around thinking you're the type of person that would help in a situation, right? But then you see a situation unfolding and find yourself starting to look around to see what other people are doing, then you need to rethink that, right? You got to remind yourself, hey, no, I'm the type of person that helps. I don't care what anyone else is doing. So I'm going to go help. From on a personal level, I got myself beat up more times than I could count in school. It's actually how I ended up in martial arts in the first place. Because I was a quiet kid, I was a shy kid, you could pick on me and I would not stand up for myself, you could do whatever to me and I would not stand up for myself, but I had this weird thing that if I saw someone else being picked on, <clears throat> or someone else, you know, being, being, being bullied or whatever the case was, I would get really angry. It was the only thing that made me angry. I never got mad. I would get sad. I would get upset at people making fun of me, but I never got angry. The only times I got angry is when I seen other people getting picked on the same way I was. And then I would get really, really upset and really, really angry. And I would jump into the middle of it. Now, bear in mind, I didn't get over five foot tall till I was a freshman in high school, right? I was tiny. I didn't get over 100 pounds till I was a freshman in high school. So I got beat up a lot doing that. Now, I'm not saying that we teach our students that that's what should be done, but at the very least, go get some help. Go get a teacher, right? I know that there are bullying problems are really absurd in some of our local schools. They're really, really bad. It's to the point that I have to teach our kids to stay near the teacher instead of trying to seclude themselves because a lot of them when they get bullied will try to seclude themselves to the corner of the playground or somewhere where they think they won't get bothered, but that just makes the bullying worse, right? I have to teach our kids, you know, how to use that loud, confident voice to try to get help and get other people's attention. Not like that playground scream, but like a real yell that is going to be more useful to, to get attention. And um, at the same time, I'm having to teach my kids, if you see this stuff happening, you, you have got to go get somebody. You have got to go find some help, right? You got to look at that teacher and say, hey, Miss So-and-so, this is going on. We need you out here right now, right? Can't let this keep happening, you know? Uh, and actually, there was just a couple of posts about it, one of the local groups recently, about how bad one of the schools is getting about their bullying. And the only way it's going to work is if everybody kind of steps up. I know a lot of the teachers are trying, right? I'd heard a situation about an art teacher having to, or a, I'm sorry, a coach having to remove some students from an art class and things along those lines, right? So getting help, loud voices, things like that is really, really important. What if that coach had never heard what was going on? You know what I mean? And, and couldn't come to help. Right, so these are things I teach our kids from ages six and up, right? Our seven and eight year old class, I talk about this quite a bit, but it starts with integrity, right? Integrity, if you believe that other people shouldn't be picked on for what they look like or what they sound like or what they think like, then, you know, put, put rubber to the road and actually live by that, actually live by that and don't make fun of people for what they look like or sound like or think like. You know what I mean? There's no point in making fun of people. We're going to have a lot better conversation and we're going to learn a lot more from each other if we just talk about our views on a particular thing and we acknowledge each other's point of view rather than just beat each other up, emo uh, physic or not physically, excuse me, mentally or uh, verbally beat each other up simply because someone thinks differently, right? The thing is, you have to understand how boring the world would be if we were all the same. If we all thought the same, a lot of people think, well, if we all thought the same about these particular issues, then everything would be fixed. Guys, that is such a naive way to look at things. It really is a naive way to look at things. Think about how boring stuff would be, right? And then everything will end up on the extreme side of whatever, right? And that doesn't necessarily work out for everybody. That doesn't allow much room for art and creativity and uh, people to be able to, to innovate and create new technologies and new businesses and things like that. We need people who are different. We need people who think different, right? And so we need to respect people for thinking different, regardless of what their opinion is compared to our own. There's got to be a level of respect there, right? There's got to be a level of respect. I see Mr. Lincoln's been watching. Mr. Rigo's been watching on Instagram. I hope you're listening to me here, right? I remember hearing some stories about you when you were younger, right? You got to keep this stuff in mind. It's really important when it comes to integrity, right? It's one thing to tease a friend that you guys have that 
that that's the, your relationship, right? That's kind of what you have. But it's another thing altogether to to put somebody down for being different than you. The world would be very, very boring if we were all the same. The world is only interesting because we are different from each other. I bet a lot of your friends are quite a bit different than you, right? It'd be kind of boring just to basically hang out with yourself, wouldn't it? I always thought so. I don't like hanging out with people just like me. I like hanging out with people a little bit different than me. Otherwise, we got nothing to talk about. You know what I mean? Right? We got nothing to talk about, nothing to do together. So again, like I say, if you find yourself feeling guilty about the ways you deal with the situation, that's your subconscious brain telling you that you did something that doesn't sit right with your heart and with your morals and with your principles and standards, right? So the first thing you got to do for integrity is figure out what those principles and morals are. Write down the things that are important to you. Think back in your life to things that happened to you that you did not like. And then think about what principles you could use to be the change in that, right? If you got bullied, then maybe courtesy, compassion, respect are things that you can use, right? Because you can either become the bully later and pass on that pain, or you can choose to be different and stop that pain in other people, right? And, and make the world a better place. So whatever those things are that you find important, right? I didn't have a lot of promises kept to me when I was young, so I am really, really big on keeping my promises to others because I remember how bad it felt to be let down time and time and time again, right? To be to be passed off time and time and time again and to not have these these promises that were made to me be actually followed through. I remember how bad that felt. So I don't want to make other people feel that bad. So you know what? I I am huge on trying to keep my promises. I And if I can't, I will feel extremely guilty and I will do everything I can to make that up to a person. I've, I've done uh, Teammate Talks podcast episodes about that before as well. You can always go back and search Teammate Talks wherever you get your podcast. You'll find other episodes about this kind of stuff. So that was really about all I had for today. Uh, basically, it starts, you have to ask yourself this question multiple times a day, am I living it, right? So if I believe in compassion, am I living it, right? I, I see a lot of that, right? So a lot of uh, uh, religion teaches compassion, right? Almost every religion teaches compassion, courtesy, right? Things along those lines, lo you know, lo loving others and things along those lines and doing right by other people. And yet I've seen many religious people who given certain certain situations and certain circumstances will completely just pass by that whole principle, right? And personally, I, I find that a person who does that or a person who just follows the majority because they want to fit in, I see that as a character flaw. I see that as a weakness. I see that as a character weakness. As in, you're not strong in your own principles. As in, you maybe you haven't even defined your own principles to yourself yet, right? Define your principles to yourself. That could be a lot of things. Discipline, right? Perseverance is is another one of these characters guys there's there's tons and tons of them self-control would be considered you know another another trait right i've already talked about compassion courtesy and respect focus is another thing that kind of fits in there but that's that one's that one's a little bit different um obviously integrity itself is a character trait honesty is a character trait, right? There are lots and lots of things that you can look at and see if they're important to you. And once you figure out that list of things that's important to you, you have to start asking yourself every day, how can I live by these principles? How can I show this principle in this situation? If certain other situations come up, how can I show that principle? How can I hold on to that? Can I remind myself to stop before I have an angry or frustrated or mean outburst and rethink my principles and then how to do that because fact of the matter is is once you become strong in your principles and once you get good at living by those principles then you gain in a whole lot of confidence and you become less shaken by other people's thoughts and opinions you begin to not worry about what other people think about you because when you're trying to live by your own principles your main concern becomes what do i think about myself and when you start living by those principles that make you feel good about yourself, then you're going to deal with a lot less guilt. You'll still have moments that you mess up and feel guilt, but you're going to deal with a lot less guilt. You're going to deal with a lot less uh, sleepless nights about that kind of thing. And you're going to deal with a lot less emotional distress when someone else has a bad opinion of you or someone else says something bad about you because it's not about what they think about you anymore. When you make it about your own character and you make your integrity about your own character, you begin to care less whether other people see that character or not. It becomes about whether you can see that character because if you can see that character in yourself, then the right people will see that character in you too and you begin to not worry about what other people say because you begin to hear them and go, well, that's obviously not true because I do everything I can to live by 
by this principle. So they're just lying and being mean and, and trying to put me down because they don't feel good about themselves and they don't feel good about themselves because they haven't learned to live by their principles in the same way I've learned to live by my character and my principles. And then I end up just kind of feeling bad for people that try to be really mean to me and put me down. I get haters, I get trolls from time to time, more on TikTok than anywhere else. But um, I get them from time to time, but you know what, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me because like, I realize that I'm living by my principles and if this person who doesn't even know me has something bad to say, about me it, and trying to put me down it's simply because they're jealous they're jealous that they're they don't have that internal strength to live by their own principles and i feel bad for them and i, I want to help right like you need to learn to believe in yourself more you know what i mean i had one the other day that made me laugh um we have a ad an ad out on hulu locally right now if you've seen it let me know in the comments uh but we we originally made that video in tiktok so it's also posted on tiktok and then I got a comment like six, seven videos down uh, that was from somebody that said, came over from Hulu, you guys suck, do better, right? And I looked at that and I was like, this dude, this dude just made that like comment off of seeing an ad. Then he searched us up on Hulu. Then he watched like seven or eight of our videos. Then he commented that. So in my mind, I'm like, well, apparently the ad's working because if someone that doesn't even like us went so far as to search us out and watch like eight of our videos before leaving a comment, then I can only imagine, you know, the people who do appreciate that and like what we do, I can only imagine what they what they think when they come across our stuff, right? Because the ones that uh, the ones that support you, they tend to be the quietest. I want to flip that. Like I want to find a way to flip that in the world where we are much louder about support than we are about hate. That's one of the things I really want to bring to our social media. If you watch our social medias, our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, we really try to bring that, you know, shouting out other people and supporting people and lifting each other up in the community. We tend to be quiet about those things because those are good things. And when good things are happening, we feel at peace. And so we tend to be more quiet, right? When hate is out there and bad things are happening, we tend to feel anger, which is a much louder and shorter lived emotion. So I feel like we should switch the way that we portray these emotions. And when it comes to the good and the supportive thing, let's be loud about that. And when it comes to the hate thing, let's just shut that up. You know what I mean? I think the world would be a lot better place that way. And we'd be setting a better example for our kids who, like I said, you know, these schools that, that, that I'm talking about that had a lot of bullying issues and stuff, where do you think they get it? Like, that was the, one of the things I couldn't help but say in that thread was, fact of the matter is, is I look at how the adults talk to each other in these groups and well, that's where the kids get it. You know what I mean? That's where they get it. But if we get more leaders at young ages and adults willing to stand up and, and be courteous and be respectful, willing to stand up for others and help others, then we can slowly begin to make a better change in our community for you know, the kids and for everyone else. And fact of the matter is, is the world's been more interconnected in the past uh, 15 years than ever, ever before, right? When social media came out and we're still trying to reconcile with that, right? There's, there's uh, three, four generations currently using that technology, half of whom didn't have it when they were young, half of whom did. And we're still trying to figure out the best ways to use that, right? And I, I don't know, to me, the answer seems obvious. Let's be loud about the good things. Let's be loud about the support. Let's comment on businesses, stuff that we like. Let's let's comment the nice things. Let's shout out awesome things that happen, right? I shouted out a student the other day who I, I had a parent come up to me and uh, start to tell me about one of the kids in class. And I was afraid. I was like, oh, the kid messed up. He's in trouble. What did he do? But that's not what she said at all. She said that uh, when he got dropped off, and, and by the way, this, this boy's not that old. He's nine. When he got dropped off, this lady saw him go and pick up our trash cans that had been knocked over and pick up the trash and put it back in the trash cans and put everything back. And he came in. I had to shout that out, right? So let's shout out the good things. And when it comes to the hateful things or the things that I feel like if I want to leave a comment on something that's hateful or mean, then let it go. Pass it by. Let it go. Because the quieter we are on a particular social media thing, the quicker it goes away. The louder we are, the longer it stays. And if we want our kids coming into social media and coming into social media ages to be able to use this stuff well and to be able to do good things with it, then we need to set the example of the good things being done with it, right? And that, again, is another part of integrity and strength of character. So until I talk to you guys again, check out our podcast, other episodes of our podcast by searching Teammate Talks wherever you get your podcast, and it's on YouTube. Until I see you guys again, be the best teammate you can be, and be the best at being you.